All right, it's the big day, time to measure your speakers. So we have done some planning, we set up RumiQ Wizard, and we did some practice at home so that all we have to do when we get in the field is do it again, but just with a different speaker. And so today we're going to, I'm basically just gonna go over with you some of the things to watch out for. I'll take you step by step through actually doing the measurements, but a lot of it is just like what ifs, a lot of what ifs. And then please feel free to comment on this video with any other what ifs and questions that come up for you. So step one, as I already talked about in the last couple of videos, always verify your audio analyzer. We talked about how to do that. You'll check all your microphone cables, make sure everything looks good. Then you're gonna get the system connected. And just a reminder that we don't want anything extra in the system. So if it's just a powered speaker, we're gonna go direct from our audio interface, direct out into that powered speaker. If, there, if we need to go into an amp first, we'll go direct into an amp. If your uh, output processor is part of that entire system, because it actually does all of the filtering that's necessary, which is often required, then that'll be there as well. Um, so just to be clear, a lot of times that's all, all of those things are always happening but sometimes they're all done in a single speaker, right? So a lot of times modern speakers have the DSP, the amp, and the speaker all combined into one unit. Some manufacturers split those apart into a separate intelligent amp and a speaker. And sometimes they're split apart even further into a controller, an amp, and a speaker. Those are the, I'd say, three most common configurations. So that's all you want in there, directly into there. So connect the system. Now the next step is, I'm gonna say completely optional for you in doing this. These are just measurements for subaligner. The, this next step is helpful, but optional. So here's what, I talked a little bit about this in a previous video. You've got everything connected, but before you actually put your speaker on the ground and the microphone on the ground, it can be helpful to do this kind of thing where you just put it up on a table or a case and you put your microphone at the distance that we talked about in the previous video where you measure the distance to the ground divided by 1.5. And you take that measurement just to give you some confidence that everything's working, but also if you have nothing else to go on because you couldn't find you know, a measurement of the speaker in Tracebook or anywhere else, then this can give you a nice high frequency aiming target. Now this is not maybe proper or 100% accurate. This is just something that I made up that I use sometimes that helps me in the field. Um, if I don't know what the speaker should look like, then this is usually the first step. Let me just take a picture of the speaker close up and just see what the, the high frequency response is supposed to look like. So that's just optional. Get a spot check that you can maybe use as an aiming target later if you don't have anything else. So you've taken that measurement. This is all stuff that we've pretty much done before and talked about in previous videos. The next thing can be tricky, but luckily it's not super important for subliner because we mostly care about the low frequency response. So as long as you get the speaker aimed down a little bit at the mic, um, then you should be good. And you know what? I just realized I forgot a very important step, which is um, calculate the mic distance. So how are we gonna do that? Um, so there's two ways. One, we can go into Tracebook. So we would go to Tracebook and you need to have an account and then you would go to the upload page. And on the upload page, one of the very first things there is this nice little um, calculator where you can just put in your loudspeakers width and height and what I like to do sometimes is just pick the biggest loudspeaker I'm going to measure which uh, usually is one of the subs or one of the line array elements and if it's something like you know uh, 1.2 meters wide by you know 0 0.5 meters high that's really big then I'll put my microphone out at 4.7 meters and just use that all day long. So that's my suggestion for you. Pick your biggest loudspeaker, uh, put it into this calculator, and then that's the measurement you can use. And then you don't have to change it at all because everything else will be shorter than that. 
Uh, the silver distance is the closest that you should go based on this calculator. And then ideally, this calculator wants you to be at the gold distance or farther. Um, why do you want to do this? Well, we want to get a picture of the entire loudspeaker as a whole. We don't ever want to get so close that we accidentally start measuring, you know, elements of that loudspeaker, like one driver, or maybe accidentally we're measuring the port. Like we want the entire thing. Uh, so this calculator helps us get into the far field. Um, if you can't get access to this calculator, uh, for some reason, then what you can also do is just measure the diagonal of the speaker and multiply it by three. So here's a picture of that. All that calculator is doing is calculating this diagonal distance for you and then multiplying it by three. That's the gold distance. And then for line array elements, it does a little bit of extra work. Um, and if you're on ground plane, so it takes some things into account for you, but Again, like just making things easier here for you. If you can't get access to that calculator, just measure the diagonal across the front of that speaker, multiply it by three. So we figured out the distance that we're going to be measuring. And if we have a few speakers, then hopefully we just use the biggest one and we can use that distance all day long. So let's talk about the aim and a few tips that I have for you. So in this video, you can see that I'm putting the microphone on the ground and then using the cable to tilt it down a little bit. That's because I want to get the microphone capsule as close to the ground as possible. And I'm just leaving the windscreen on there to protect the capsule a little bit. Uh, and this box is here just as an aiming target, but then I took that away later. Once I've got the microphone out at the right distance, then I'm going to work on aiming that speaker down. And you can see that I'm using uh, some whatever I can find oftentimes like rolls of tape like some shims uh, if you have I don't know a triangular doorstop or something whatever you can use to tilt that loudspeaker down um, and then the next step a lot of times for me is putting my laser disto on the front of the speaker here and then looking at the camera on it so my laser disto has a camera on the face and I can look at where it's aiming and I can see when the speaker is aimed down at the microphone. If you don't have that, don't worry. You can still just turn the laser on and see when the laser is pointed at the microphone. And if you can't see that, then again, this is not 100% critical. Just get as close as you can, just using your eyeballs so that it looks like the speaker is aimed at the microphone. That's the whole goal here. Now I put the next step as capture here, but what I should probably put here is test or something like that because what usually happens to me is I have to do a few measurements before I really get it uh, working correctly. Maybe I take a measurement and I can see based on the spot check or the aiming target that I have that the aim is not quite right. So I adjust the aim a little bit, see if it gets better. Um, sometimes I've measured indoors and realized that there's way too much ripple in the low end. Remember what we talked about ripple? Let's see if I have it here these up down up down characteristics here if it's really deep like more than 10 db from peak to trough then uh, you should probably go outside i know i said this in the very first video but it's happened to me a lot of times that i think it's going to work indoors and then it never does because there's just uh, too many walls too many reflections so you might have to do a few practice ones that's fine because what happens is after you get through doing a few practice ones then you can just actually taking the measurements goes really fast. But here's my suggestion when it comes to actually capturing the measurements. After you've done your tests and you feel confident that you're going to get some good data, then when you go to take that measurement, turn your repetitions all the way up. So normally this is just on one, but it can be really helpful in reducing noise, especially when you're outdoors and especially when there's like wind or any noise nearby to set this higher. And another component to just getting high quality measurements is uh, having good signal to noise ratio. So you remember in a previous video, we talked about turning this up to get um, 20 dB above the noise floor. So 10 dB when we were just practicing was fine, but ideally we wanna shoot for 20 dB. So we can kind of look at this meter down here and see like about where is the noise floor when nothing's happening. And then let me shoot for turning this up until I get to 10 to 20 dB above that. 
So that's how you set that. And then you want to set your microphone preamp gain so that you are nice and hot, so that you're getting a nice healthy signal, but never so much that you're actually clipping. And then crank this all the way up. Now you see that this goes way up. So if you don't have patience for this, that's totally fine. But a lot of you are just going to be doing one or two speakers that maybe just have one or two DSP presets. So, um, you know, it'll help out with your measurement quality if you have the patience to turn this up. Before you actually hit that capture button, I've created a list of things you need to document here. And actually you could do it afterwards, but if you do it beforehand, then you'll make sure that you have it. So you can just copy this stuff, which I'll put below this video, and I will put on the upload page here in the Subliner app, which I'll show you in a second. Um, but if you just paste that in here and fill that out and say like, hey, what brand am I doing? Well, this is, uh, I have some Meyer sound speaker, which wouldn't be necessary because I have almost all of the Meyer sound speakers already. Anyway, you have <laughs> some brand here and uh, some model. And then what will happen is after you fill all this out, then the next time if you keep this checked, then the next measurement will have all this information as well. So you can keep just changing the minor things. So I'm going to do another measurement. It's the exact same speaker, exact same setup. I'm just going to change the DSP preset, for example. I think brand model and preset are pretty self-explanatory. These are just the, you know, manufacturer things. A lot of times on the amp or on the back of the speaker, there's just a switch that says like main, sub, dance, speech, those kinds of things. Use definable settings. Those are any other switches that you might change that change the sound. And like an array switch or something that, that puts in like a low frequency shelf, <clears throat> excuse me, or does some kind of filtering. That would be an important thing to note here. Here we need the exact distance. So we calculated sort of a, a, a distance here to use, but after we've done the, you know, move things around and we've aimed the speaker up and down, now we need to go out and measure that exact distance. So put your uh, laser disto or your tape measure right at the microphone capsule and measure all the way up to the speaker grill or baffle. Uh, so if you have an amp, um, this is the same place to fill out that information. You notice there's a firmware setting here that might be important. And then anything else that I may have forgotten that sort of defines your speaker. Now one sort of annoying thing that I know people don't like to do but is important is that if you are measuring your own custom speakers where you're creating your own custom preset, you basically need to write out everything that's in that preset. That means like every parametric filter, every high pass filter, every low pass filter, all that stuff because other people might use that. It is possible and they want to see exactly what you did so they can get the same results. And just for documentation purposes, when you go to reuse this, I don't want there to be any question where you say, oh, I measured the speaker, but now I can't remember if I actually had this filter here or here. And that's all really important. We can only use Subliner with all of these things that have been predefined. So the reason that Subliner works is because we're doing all of the work ahead of time. We're front loading this entire process so that once we get into the field, all we need to do is equalize any distance offset because we already know everything else. And that's how you do fast system setups is by doing as much work as possible ahead of time so that once you get into the field, you have a lot less things to worry about. So we're doing all this work ahead of time. So write down all of those filters uh, in user-definable settings that you might be using, and I will make sure to include them in the measurement so that when you open it up in Subliner, you can see, oh yeah, that's right, this is my Nathan Lively custom preset that has these five filters in it, and I better make sure those are exactly the same. Okay, so then you basically just hit measure, and you may want to do that a couple of times and just take a look at them, see if they look similar, see if everything's good. Um, you've documented everything. It's a really good idea to take a photo because when you send this to me later and then you include a photo, it'll be a lot easier for me to troubleshoot and say like, oh, I have the question. Did he do this the way I think he did? And then I'll look at your photo and see like, oh, he did. Or I'll may maybe I'll have a follow-up question and say like, this doesn't look right. Can you check on this thing? Um, and then just send me everything. Again, you can just hit save up here, save all. 
and it'll put all this stuff into a folder. It may be too big for email. You can put it into Dropbox or whatever. Um, so I know that was a lot of details in this video, but maybe, you know, watch a couple of times or bring it with you to the field if possible. I forgot to mention, feel free to schedule a call with me to chat about this stuff. So I will try to keep this page, the upload page of Subaligner. I'll keep this updated with all this information and I'll put these videos here. And there's a link here that says schedule a Zoom meeting with Nathan. When you click on that, then it'll show you some options on my calendar where you can pick a time that we can meet. And if none of those times work for you, just let me know when you're gonna be in the field. We can work it out together. Email me and tell me, hey, I'm gonna be out in the field taking my measurements on Saturday. Can you please meet me on Zoom? Or here's my phone number. Can you please give me a call? I would really love to make this work for more people because I know that the key to making Subaligner valuable for you is to have all of your speakers in there. And, you know, if I'm not near you and I can't go out and measure your speakers for you, I feel like this is the second best thing. So if I can make this clear and, you know, make this more or less easy for you to get done, then I know that um, together we can make something that's really valuable. So thanks for watching this and thanks for, you know, your patience with my sort of meandering tips here and there and let me know how it goes. Thanks.